Hey guys, you're watching because you want to know me. My name is AJ. Welcome back to a tutorial. Not so long ago, I put out a video showing the Let's Build a City map that's returning. And you guys were interested in a few tutorials on how I got that map to the state that it is now in the programs that I used. I've already done a tutorial on how to make your own custom texture pack. Today, we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to use world painter a program that basically allows you to paint your own seed to begin with very very cool to get the program you're going to go to worldpainter.net all the links will be in the description below and you're going to download the version that you need for your computer if you're on an apple mac computer you're going to need that one if you're on windows you're going to need one of these two if you have a 32-bit computer or a 64-bit computer, I cannot tell you that. It's your computer. Uh, but basically, uh, newer computers will be 64-bit. Most of the time, older computers will be 32-bit. If you're unsure, download the 32-bit. If it works, then great. If it doesn't work, download the 64-bit. That's the best tutorial that I can give you for that. Uh, install it. It's super, super simple to install. And once you've got it, you're going to have something that looks similar to this okay a lot of buttons that look very complicated but it's not we shall walk through it what we're going to do first is go to file new world you're going to name it so we're going to name it world painter tutorial you're then going to choose how big do you want the map to be now my map that i used are for the let's build the city world is a thousand blocks approximately by a thousand blocks but we have to do it in multiples of 128 reason behind that is because of chunk size okay each chunk is like 16 by 16 and the game has to like work out full chunks has to it works in, in 16 by 16 so the closest one to a thousand is 1024 so we'll do the same thing as what i had on on the let's build a city world we'll make a 1024 by 1024 block map boom Oop, click that it gives you an estimated walking time from one edge to the other of four minutes which I think is a decent size. I think it's a good size. You can choose how, what you want your build height limit to be. I'm going to leave it on normal 256. Uh, but we're going to choose flat here. If you want the world to have like little hills and little gradients, then you can keep it on hilly. But I'm going to start from scratch. So we're going to hit flat here. Basically, this makes it like a super flat world. We've got level here. This first one is the level that you want the grass to be at. And then the water level is what you want the water level to be at. Now, default Minecraft will start at level 64. If you're doing a survive, if, you, if you're making your own survival world here, you're probably going to want to keep it on 64 because you want lots of room underneath for resources and caves and mine shafts and things like that. If you're doing a creative world like I am, I always drop that down a little bit. I usually drop that down to about 30. The reason why I do that is because it still gives us room below for basements and tunnels and things like that. But for up higher, uh, let's say you're building a skyscraper, it's a further distance before you get to the clouds. You'll know if you've played Minecraft on a normal survival world, the hill doesn't have to be that tall before you go into the clouds. We want a skyscraper to go up to the clouds, not necessarily go through it. So, you're now going to have to change the water level, otherwise the water's going to be higher than the ground. So we're going to put that at, uh, we can put that at 30 as well, to be honest. Boom. You can click lava instead of water if you want lava instead of water. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Maybe you're some sort of uh, evil person that's trying to make a nether as the overworld. You can do that if you want. And I always untick beaches here. Because as you can see, if you click beaches, it sort of looks like a camouflage. I don't really know. Uh, but I always have that unticked anyway. You can choose what material you want to have as the top level. Now, if you choose normal grass, that means it will have flowers and long grass and sort of all the little bits that you have in plains biomes uh, if you go into this and choose bare grass that's the one that I have because it gets rid of all that I don't want to have to manually delete flowers and stuff when I'm building I like to put those in where I want you can also choose other blocks as well if you choose desert uh, it'll put sand down but will also put cactuses all over the place for you the same with red desert mesa biome stone mix which is going to include uh, andesite granite and diorite and stuff like that uh whatever you want you can choose whatever you want you can have nether like if you like but i'm going to choose bare grass okay uh minecraft seed ocean or land a lot of people get confused about this basically if you get to the edge of the world that you've created here in world painter this is going to define what's going to be after that so if you wanted if you kept walking to the edge of the map and you wanted other biomes to be there then you'd click land. So 
you get to the edge of what you've made and it might go to a jungle biome that's been randomly generated by Minecraft itself. If you want to be an island like what I had for the Let's Build a City, then when you get to the edge of the map, you're going to want to have more water there. So we're going to click Ocean. That's all we need to do for now. We're going to hit Create. Boom, we've got ourselves a nice blank slate. We're going to go into Edit, Dimension Properties. Okay, we're going to go into here first. And now we can choose a little bit more specifics about the map. If you go into uh, ignore the topic, we don't need to worry about the topic, but underground material. Okay, now if you choose stone mix, which is on by default, that's going to include stone, diorite, andesite, granite, gravel, and all the other stuff. Uh, you can choose exactly what you want, but I'm going to put just stone. I just want stone there for a creative world for myself. Uh, I don't want to come across andesite and diorite and stuff. I just want a nice clean stone down there. If you click bottomless world, it's going to mean it's going to take away that bedrock layer at the bottom. Uh, so if you dig all the way down, you'll just fall through it to the void. And if you're doing a border for, let's say, I don't know, a Hunger Games map or something like that, and you wanted to have uh, a surround or some sort of wall, even a bedrock wall here to surround the whole place, you can do that by clicking one of those. I don't need that, though. Default terrain layers. Bear grass is on the first layer, permadeath is a little bit below it, rock is below that, and then deep snow uh, is going to be on the higher parts of the mountain. Anything above layer 223 is set by default. Now you can change these numbers to specifically what you want, and I haven't really used World Painter enough to know like specific numbers. Uh, I would recommend just experimenting, choosing what layers you feel sort of is right. Some people like having snow start lower down on mountains. Some people like having the snow start higher up. And you can even add your own layer as well of specific what block you want at what specific level. But we're going to leave that how it is. Uh, caverns and chasms. Chasms and ch caverns and chasms. Wow. Uh, this will allow you to put your own or naturally generate sort of in the program caves and stuff like that for a creative world we don't want caves so we keep these unchecked leave that how it is resources we don't want resources here on our creative world we want, don't want to dig down and come across iron and gold and diamonds and stuff like that so we're going to uncheck that but if you're doing a survival world you can actually go crazy at the amount of customization you can do here you can choose how often certain things come up so one percent of the time diamond comes up six percent of the time Iron comes up 10% of the time, coal comes up. Well, you can choose that and change diamond to 50% of the time if you wanted to. It's totally up to you, but we don't want anything in ours. And then other layers, uh, this is something that not many people really that often touch. Allow Minecraft to populate the entire terrain. Uh, we'll sort of put uh, temples and villages and stuff like that about, but we don't want that. We're just going to hit OK now. Boop. And there we go. So, how do we create our own island now? The first thing that we're going to want to do is shape the island. So, what we're going to do is we're going to hit this button right here, which is uh, raise or lower the terrain. Click that. And we're going to choose what brush. Now, I think this is a, usually a pretty good brush to start off with. So, it's a nice small circle. If you want to zoom in and out, you can hold down control and use your mouse wheel. Or you can use the magnifying glasses found at the top here. I like to go out so I can see the whole thing. And if you want a bigger brush, you can use the plus or minus sign found on your uh, number pad. If you left click, terrain will go up. Uh, you can't really see that, but basically it's a cone. I will zoom in later on when we get to that. If you right click, it will make the terrain go down. Therefore, exposing the water. So, let's go around the edge. And just sort of make a square island to begin with. Obviously, we set it earlier on in the in the properties there. So if you go beyond this water, it's all going to be ocean anyway. So we can just go around the edge there. And then let's shape it. We'll have a little bit of a rounder edge here. I think on my uh, Let's Build a City World, I sort of had a little sort of river coming in there. Something like that. You guys can spend as long as you want doing it as this is a tutorial i don't want to spend too long doing this kind of thing but i think that's pretty good oops for the moment if you want to undo something you can control z okay that's pretty good i think that's a pretty good island sort of shape for now let's think about some terrain let's zoom in a little bit if we go into view oops view and go into show 3d view it's sort of going to render out what it will look like from from um, in Minecraft itself. So obviously at the moment it's super flat so there's not really much to look at. I've got multiple monitors so I can actually keep this on the screen and keep it in sight but 
obviously I can only record one screen at a time so I shall slide this back in in a moment and show you what we're gonna do here we're gonna go to the raise and lower terrain by default you won't have these oh you will have these two brushes I think you won't have these brushes here but you'll have these ones these brushes will uh, sort of give you a rough mountain look but what you can do is you can go to Google and just Google search images world painter brushes and you can download your own custom ones okay it gives you a little bit more flexibility they look a little bit more natural looking but for this tutorial see as though you guys aren't gonna have those I'm gonna use the normal ones we're gonna keep with this sort of roundish brush or maybe even go to that one yeah let's go to that one a sort of noise brush we're gonna make it a little bit bigger by hitting the plus sign on our number cat pad and we're gonna left click to make the terrain go up now as you can see we're starting to get some sort of height here uh, the higher you go the more black lines you will get like this this is a, a height map like a uh, old school maps in real life uses uses use lines to signify how tall or how low something is it sort of gives you a rough idea a much easier way though is to use this 3d view and you can just keep an eye on it as you can see here you can see the mountain that we're starting to build ha 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 amazing so let's uh Let's sort of have a mountainous area at the north end of our map here. You can choose how strong you want the brush to be. The higher percentage, the quicker it's going to go up in the air. The lower the percentage, the sort of softer it's going to go up. If Let's say you were just sort of tweaking little bits. I want to just have this at 100% because I want to get some nice tall mountains and sort of uh, rough areas. So we'll go around here and we'll have sort of a taller one in the middle. So I'm just going to hold this down for a little bit. And, uh, and get some real good height. Let's have a look in the 3D view. Did I have the 3D? I think I might have closed it by accident. Show 3D view. There we go. So it looks a little bit unnatural at the moment, wouldn't you say? A little bit unnatural. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this smooth tool here. And uh, let's just go with sort of a rounder one. We're going to just sort of smooth that off a little bit. If I slide this back in. Now, as you can see, we've got rid of those huge sort of, I don't know what you would call them, spikes almost. And it's got a little bit more of a smoother mountain. Now, you can rough this or smooth this up as much as you want. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go into too much depth because I don't want this tutorial to go on forever. If you want to have a flat area to build on, you can click this little button. Make your brush a little bit smaller. And wherever you click, it's sort of going to round off and flatten off that area. I come back over here you can see that we now have a nice flat area to be able to build on and you can go from there so that was basically all that I needed to do for my creative world because I didn't have to worry about biomes and things like that if you guys are gonna make this for your own survival world you're gonna probably want to think a little bit more about trees and forests and stuff so let's go into that a little bit what we're gonna do is you're gonna click on biomes first and let's do one biome for starters we're gonna click forest here we want a forest biome right where our spawn is now your your spawn is gonna be this little red cross that you can see so let's uh, increase the size of this brush you're gonna click on the spray can and we're gonna sort of paint on a forest biome now this isn't gonna put trees down this is just gonna tell the game that this is a forest biome if you hit f3 it would now say forest if you went over those blocks if you want to add trees to it you're going to go into layers and you're going to hit hmm deciduous or swamp or whatever one you want we're going to do deciduous trees and we're going to paint in that same sort of area like that let's say we now wanted a jungle let's do a jungle biome we're going to go to biomes we're going to find jungle We've got jungle there, we've also got mesa, we've got mega taiga, we've got frozen rivers, nether end biomes. You can do the nether and the end worlds on here if you wanted to, but I'm not going to go into that, and at least not in this video. We're going to keep it on, on the uh, jungle here, and we're going to paint on a nice big jungle biome there. Then we're going to go into terrain, uh, no, layers, sorry, and we're going to hit jungle. And we're going to paint the same sort of area with jungle trees. Wonderful. Now... This isn't going to be like the finished version. You're going to go into uh, into the world later on and you're going to fine tune certain parts. It's going to take a little bit of practice to get the size how you wanted it. You might think, oh wow, that's way too big. Or you might go into the world and find out that you made the biome like only a few blocks wide. Uh, it just takes a little bit of practice. 
There's all sorts of buttons on here that you can choose from. You can set your spawn, you can fill certain areas with water or with lava or whatever. But for tutorial purposes, we're going to leave it like this. So how do we now get this onto our world? How do we get this into Minecraft? Well, we're going to go to File and we're going to go to Export. Export as a new Minecraft map. Now we can... Uh, choose where you want to save it obviously we're going to leave it where it is that's sort of the default location i'm going to save the name of the map as world painter tutorial and you can now go through all this stuff that we done earlier on if you thought that you want to change your mind on a couple of things like resources and things like that but we've already done that so we don't need to worry about that where you can uh, include a bonus chest if you want like with your wooden tools to start off with we want to on creative though we want to be able to fly about uh, we can choose the difficulty that it by default starts on. And then here the map format. If you're doing a Minecraft 1.1 version or uh, earlier, you can choose that. If you're doing 1.2 to 1.9, choose this one. Okay, so we're doing 1.2 to 1.9 map here. Hit export. Depending on if you've done the nether worlds and the end worlds and all this other stuff, it will depend on how long it takes for a world to export. Since so we're just doing the overworld here, it's not really going to take that long. Plus, there isn't really much for, for it to uh, to calculate. We haven't got any ores in the ground. We don't really have that many different biomes and stuff like that. So it's pretty simple. It shouldn't take too long. Wait till that bar fills up and it'll say, yes, there you go. Your world is now ready to play. And then you can load it up in Minecraft. Any moment now. <laughs> there we go. Boop. So we can now close this down. We can load up Minecraft. Now for you guys, this screen is probably most likely going to go black because my game, my, my capture, my screen capture here uh, has to have a specific setting to, to record Minecraft. So I'm going to hit play and I shall see you on the menu screen. Okay, so we go into single player. Boom, there it is right there, World Painter Tutorial. We're going to click on this, load up the world. It's going to build it for the first time. And there we go. Here's our island. These are the trees that we surrounded ourselves in um, around the spawn. If you chose normal grass and not bare grass, you would also have flowers. There's our bonus chest. You'd also have flowers and long grass and stuff like that. Uh, but seeing as though we've been doing a mix of both creative and survival aspects here, uh, we only have sort of just the trees themselves. I think, what way, what did we do? We done a jungle over here? Yeah, we done jungle over here. There we go. And if we hit F3, you can see at the moment we are in river biome, because there's a river there. We are in jungle biome here, and if we go this way, you can see where the grass sort of changes. We are in plains. If you only done the biomes brush, it would only change the color of the grass. It wouldn't put the trees down. If you only done like the layers of the, the trees, then you would have the jungle trees, but it wouldn't be classed as a jungle biome when you hit F3. It also wouldn't change the color of the grass below here either. So you need to make sure you do them both. Obviously, Minecraft will then work its magic. Um, if, as it's a jungle biome, it's going to spawn ocelots. As this is a river biome, I don't know what's so special about a river biome, but it's a river biome. You can choose beaches. You can do all kinds of things. And then if we go over here, we had our uh, our mountain that we done. There we go. It goes right up to the clouds there. And it looks pretty good. There's the flat area that we worked out. You guys can spend hours smoothing it out and perfecting it exactly how you want. But I think we got a pretty good height. I think we done well. Level 30 for me works really well because we get to have a huge, massive mountain that peaks right at the clouds. Works really, really well, don't you think? You never get that You never get that sized mountain in normal Minecraft, do you? I mean, that is huge. But anyway, that's going to do it for this tutorial, guys. If you enjoyed it, and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you want to see more tutorials or you're interested in seeing the uh, City series that's going to be starting or has started. I'm not going to say anything. Uh, then uh, feel free to subscribe. We shall see you in the next episode.